Every feature on this machine is, has been discussed with customers. It, it's, it's an advancement on what we've done in the past. And the design team have had to design the technical capabilities to within a price bracket. And, and it's that price bracket that takes us into a new market. So this is the next in our series of videos on the compact machine from Hecker and with Lee Scott. Um, Lee, in this, uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the fourth and the fifth axis configuration, the options, um, why you build it the way you do and what that means to a user, because obviously that's a critical part of, of everything that we discuss. So perhaps explain to start with, um, yeah, you can have fourth and fifth axis and what's the difference and who chooses what? Previously, we talked about the spindle and the the cutting tool side of the, 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 the business area, if you like. The table is obviously what holds, holds the components. On a fourth axis table, we've got a B axis, which simply rotates. On the fifth axis, we've got a trunnion table, so we've got rotation in, 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 in two directions. Okay, now what's great here is we can see this. We've stopped this in situ, so we can illustrate um, a pallet system, and of course you can see the, the five axis table, at, or the fourth and fifth axis table at the back there. Now, um, fourth axis is, is popular, but not as popular as five axis. Why is that, and should that be the case? Well, I'd say no, it shouldn't be the case. Very, very rarely in the UK are we asked for four axis these days. But globally, we sell a lot of four axis machines. So if you just need four axes, why would you buy five? But fashion dictates five axis, I think, in the UK. And also, of course, future proofing. People don't know what the next job is and whether they need that simultaneous five axis. But what's important to state though, Lee, is that whether you do choose fourth or, or fifth axis machining, you're still gonna see significant uplifts in your productivity, aren't you? Which is, of course, what everybody's after. Now, let's take your table that you've got in here. Let's take the fourth and fifth axis area. What do Hecate do that really gives consumers or customers the difference when they're looking at machining precisely and productively? So firstly, it's the fundamental design, which is like a big bridge. So you've got your, your Z-axis guideways are set wide apart, which gives you a lot of stability. And alongside those, you've got direct measuring systems, twin ball screws to drive the system as well. So the B-axis is, is a single axis table that sits on top of the bridge. The, the, the fifth axis is a trunnion with, with two axes that sit on top of the bridge. Very heavy duty, rigid design. Okay, so if you've got the, the bridge being driven on both sides, there's no chance of it crabbing or anything like that, is it? You've got an equal force coming from left and to right to drive the bridge backwards and forwards, I assume. You, you have, and you, you, you've got a cross talk between those two sides, if you like. So both, both sides know what the other side's doing at all times. So that's never a problem. You've also got a thermosymmetric design, which is really important on these machines. Particularly if you look at the trunnion design compared to a competitor's machine. So on our machines, we've got the same design each side of the table. So the ears, if you like, are the same size. The bearings are the same size within those covered ears. And the, um, the braking system is the same. So if you compare that to other machines where you're just holding it from one side or you're holding it on a large bearing from one side and just a small bearing or a center the other side, we've got a much more stiffer, rigid design. Well, what does that mean to me, though, as the, as the potential purchaser of this, Lee? Well, it means you can drive bigger cuts, faster, harder, and ultimately make more profit on the machine. Okay, and I'm sure that is exactly what people um, want to hear. Now, it, this is not just about milling, four axis or five, you can also turn, can't you, with these machines. How does that work on this table, and what do Hecate do in order to give process reliability in that area? A standard table is going to rotate at 80 revs. A turning option is up to 900 revs. You've got direct torque drive tables and you've got a, an imbalance detection as well. So if, if you are turning and you've not got a fully balanced table, the machine stops. It tells you where to add the balance weight and you can continue in a balanced mode. What about the hydraulic, the clamping mechanisms and all of those things? Because when you've got big parts moving around, it's, it's important to, to factor these things in. It's a really important question that because Things have evolved now in work holding and there's a, there's a lot more um, automated work holding used on these machines. Of course you can clamp parts manually, but more often than not we sell these machines with through table hydraulics, so up to 13 ports, combination of hydraulic and, and, and pneumatic uh, systems. And even with the 900 rev turning option, we can still um, control the, the, the clamping at high speed rotation on turning which is absolutely critical, isn't it? Um, 
those are really important points about turning it. Coming back to milling, your B axis, when it moves, how quick does it move? Because all of, I see these machines, they're all about minimizing non-cut time, aren't they? So how quick can you index that table? Well, the simple answer to the indexing of the table is for 90 degrees, it's 0.31 of a second. So it's quick. And people often say when they watch the movers of the machines that we've speeded things up, we haven't. But what's also really important, as well as the rotation of the fourth or fifth axis uh, trunnion itself, is the, the fact we've got on, on all these machines as a standard two table. So the, when the machine is, uh, is um, not cutting, you're loading another part, either manually, hydraulically, or, or through some kind of FMS system or robot system. And you don't want things stopping the machine from operating. One of those things could be swarf chip fall away, chips getting caught up in, in, in the machining area. And notice here you haven't got what I often see, which is almost like your, your, your swarf screws. You do it differently? No, we don't have the swarf screws. We, we have on this design, as, as, as you can see, a very, very large area for the swarf to drop straight down into, and a large swarf conveyor to take the swarf out of the back of the machine. There's two advantages there. Firstly, we can move a very high volume of swarf. You know, some of these swarf little screw things, you could hardly get a mouse to run down the channel. On ours, you can get 10 litres a minute of aluminium out of the machine. And also, we don't have any telescopic covers or, or any swarf traps inside the machine. The swarf drops straight down over a fixed cover that runs the length of the machine. So there's no maintenance issues with, with telescopic covers, no breakdowns, nothing can get jammed inside the machine. Uh, talk, people talk, and we see it a lot, about machining upside down so the swarf fall away is better. Uh, you may argue that this machine can do it, but it's not always the best way. Perhaps put that point across. Well, there's, there's two ways of looking at it. You, you could load a component straight to the table, in which case you can rock the table backwards, all the way forwards, even upside down, and machine upside down. To be honest, when we machine on these machines, the swarf gets blasted out of the way anyway, so I'm not sure I agree with the argument about machining upside down. But what you can also do on these tables, because they've got very high load weight capability, is you can put a tombstone with multiple faces on top of a five axis table. So not only have a five axis machine, but have multiple sides of, of, a, of a tombstone, multiple work pieces, different setups, combination of, of different ways to manufacture parts. So it's a lot more flexible than a lot of other machines on the market. I suppose with the, the stability of this system, you can add heavier parts, singular parts, but also tombstones with multiple parts in different materials. Total flexibility is what I'm hearing from you. Uh, early. In all of the videos we're doing in this series and this episode specifically about the fourth and fifth axis, affordability. We have to mention this every time because it's a big driver for Hecate at the moment. These are very affordable going into all kinds of machining environments. How do you do everything that you've done within the price brackets that you have mentioned to us before? The simple answer to that is that the, every feature on this machine has, has been discussed with customers. It, it's, it's an advancement on what we've done in the past and the design team have had to design the technical capabilities to within a price bracket. And, and it's that price bracket that takes us into a new market. And if you had to say a few singular words to describe why people should consider this option compared to other machine tools, what would they be, Lee? What are those real salient final points you would mention about the way this machine is built? With certainly accuracy, it's certainly rigidity, so performance, and with accuracy and performance, you're making more money.